Hi, this is Dr. Tom Rogers at Performance Medicine coming to you with a weekly podcast of the Common Sense MD. Today I'm going to talk about something very interesting, really a game changer. You've probably heard about it, but I did get three new books this week that I love. A couple of them by Dr. Jason Fung, esteemed nephrologist who talks a lot about diabetes and and, uh, what we eat and how it relates, and another book called The Big Fat Surprise. You know, I'm always talking about eating more fats and way less carbs. If you saw my podcast from last week about probably eating more protein as well, but today I'm going to focus on something that has been a game changer for my practice, but really worldwide for people that struggle with obesity. As you know, um, The main focus of my practice for the last 18 years has been on the the fight against obesity. In fact, that's why I hung out my shingle. Um, And I got out of what what I call corporate medicine uh, or traditional medicine, whatever you want to call it. But traditional medicine is so far behind and so slow to change on things. You know, I've said many times that our country's main medical problem is obesity, which leads to most of the other medical problems like heart disease, cancer, general debility, um, diabetes, which is insulin resistance is the key to all this. It's what Dr. Fung talks about in all his books and and lectures. Um, And this is going to tie in today with that insulin resistance. Um, Fortunately, even mainstream medicine is starting to come around to some of the truths, like the world is not flat, um, that obesity is a chronic metabolic disease. I want to repeat that. Obesity is a chronic metabolic disease. needs chronic treatment. Granted, the conditions we live in is not the same as it was many years ago with the foods, the stress, the toxins that we live in, all that. Um, I think when high fructose corn syrup was introduced into this country and they they tried to tell us that fats made us fat and everybody started eating more sugar, I think that's what was the main cause of this obesity epidemic and heart disease. You know, fats do not cause heart disease. Um, sugars do, but that was a stimulus to hold all this stuff. And now we've had an epidemic of obesity. At least half of us are obese and all this diabetes that we see. I mean, half my day is spent treating diabetes and obesity. The other half figuring out people's hormones. Um, but anyway, so when a new class of medications evolved, um, most of us know that of that is Ozempic. Um, the thinking has changed on this with mainstream medicine. Thank God it has, because um, before that it was more like all fat shaming. Um, so now people have hope where they didn't really used to be uh, have any hope at all, because the other stuff didn't work too well. Even a company like Weight Watchers um, realize this is going to go out of business unless they admit they were wrong about this stuff. Um, So they are now in the telemedicine business um, of helping people obtain these new drugs for weight loss. Isn't that interesting? So they're betting millions of dollars, basically their whole company, um, on this. I mean, everyone knows people need to eat better. And the common denominator seems to be less sugar. It's not these points that you count for Weight Watchers. Not that that didn't work a little bit. I mean, any kind of diet works and every diet fails. Um, It's more a way of life. But for most people that are chronically obese, it's it's a metabolism problem. Very complex and even Weight Watchers admits that it's impossible for most obese people to maintain weight loss. Um, so, everybody's heard of Ozempic, semiglutide. 
it's been a game changer. It's called Wegovy now, which is approved for weight loss. Ozempic is approved for diabetes. But you've seen a lot of my previous podcast on this. I've even had patients come on here. And in my opinion, this class of drugs is the most significant new drug of this century. Probably what, maybe the last 50 years. Who knows? But um, today I want to talk about a new kid on the block kind of in the same class, with, but with an added benefit. Um, it's called Monjero, or Tirzepatide. I can't pronounce that word very well. Uh, Tirzepatide, I think is the right way to pronounce it. But anyway, um, we'll call it Monjero. Think of Mount Kilimanjaro. Um but it will be the biggest selling drug of all time. Right now, it's just approved for diabetes. It will be approved for weight loss, is my prediction. I'll be astounded if it's not, especially because there's a couple of new studies that have come in that's just been astounding. So how is it different than Ozempic semiglutide, which is a great life-changing medication? Mongero is a dual GLP-1 agonist. and it has a GIP agonist, which means glucose-dependent insulinotrophic polypeptide. Remember, we're always talking about peptides. I love peptides. That's another one of them. Um, it's hard to pronounce, but anyway, just remember what it does. And this added GIP, in addition to the GLP-1, is what makes this different. They are both what we call incretins. Now, incretins are hormones secreted by the gut after food intake to stimulate insulin secretion. Um, the GIP is secreted from the upper gut, whereas the GLP-1 from the lower gut. This stuff gets real complex if you do a deep dive, and I have. It involves other factors such as DPP-4 and peptide YY that I've talked about in the past. Um, but these in cretin hormones, GLP-1 and GIP, are in, they're impaired in obese patients. It's not like somebody that's lean. They're impaired. And that's kind of why bariatric surgery works. Um, because in one aspect, that's why it works, because they do cut part of your stomach or bypass it, but it affects these hormones. That's why your diabetes the day after your bariatric surgery your sugars are normal because you haven't really changed that much in the way you eat yet in one day. It's because of these hormone secretions. And they're finally coming around the fact that after bariatric surgery, you're probably going to need one of these medicines, the GLP-1 and maybe the GIP, to maintain that weight loss because you can regain that weight after bariatric surgery. Easy. I've seen it many, many times. Um but it turns out these incretins have additional effects on adipose cells, fat cells, also bone and the cardiovascular system. Their therapeutic effects are protective for heart, kidneys, brain, even for fatty liver. So a lot of the other specialists like the cardiologist, the gastroenterologist, the nephrologist are using these for those purposes. So these drugs are for a lot more than just weight loss and diabetes. They're a game changer. They stimulate, what the, how these medicines work is they really stimulate the release of insulin to control your blood sugars. But they also slow down the release of glucose from your liver. And they slow gastric emptying, which makes you feel full longer. Thereby, some people have a little nausea when they first take, take them. There's been a fair, very few people that couldn't take this at all because of nausea, but usually you get used to it. Um, Monjero also inhibits the brain's hunger signals. I've even had a couple people tell me that they feel better mentally on Monjaro, that their ADD got better. Go figure that. Um, because it does affect your neurotransmitters. Um, but the big news, like I said, is the result of these two new recent trials of Mongero. The first showed a loss of 22% of your body weight. 
after 72 weeks. The second trial that just came in showed a bit less, but overall major weight loss. And many patients did way better than this. Um, so that's interesting. So what we call this is a twin cretin instead of one in cretin, two. Um, so it's really, it was more effective than, than Ozempic, which is a great drug. Clinically, I have experience a lot with both these drugs for weight loss and diabetes. Um, Ozempic or Wegovy is an amazing drug. Uh, but Mongero seems to have a little bit of the upper edge, a little bit better weight loss and probably a little less nausea on it. Um, not so for some people, but probably for most people a little bit better. Um, remember, Mongero is not approved for weight loss. It's approved for diabetes only, but it will be. And remember, about half of what us doctors do is off-label anyway, so it's perfectly legal. Um, but um, I have people that prefer one or the other. So they're both great drugs, but there is a difference um, in the way they work. And it seems to be Mongero hits more pathways, maybe have a little less side effects and better weight loss. Um, again, you can't take either of these drugs if you have a history of pancreatitis, medullary cancer, the thyroid, which is very rare. I've never seen a case. Um, or something called MEN syndrome number two, multiple endocrine neoplasia, which is a series of cancers. Or if, if you have a family history of this, again, very rare. Um, so now we've got two very powerful tools in our armamentarium for the chronic treatment of obesity and diabetes. And most, again, most obese patients are just going to need to stay on them. I mean, this is not something that um, you get on for a few weeks or months and then get off of them. Um, some people can if they radically change their lifestyle, which we emphasize, and look into the, all the other stuff that you need to look into. Um, and that's what most of these weight loss clinics and Weight Watchers and that sort, not that they're bad, but they don't really look into all the other factors that go into this uh, because it's complex. Um, but, you know, you need to stay on these medicines chronically for the most part if you have morbid obesity. Like you chronically need to stay on blood pressure medicine for hypertension, hypercholesterolemia, diabetes. It's chronic. Um, you know, not that there aren't people that can reverse these totally, but there's not many people that can do that, in my opinion, without help. Um, so obesity is not a character flaw or laziness. It's a metabolic disease. We're starting to think of it like that. We have for a long time, but even mainstream medicine is now. If you, if you look at it. Um, but patients, of course, need to learn to eat better, which means less carbs, in my opinion, and more good fats and probably more protein. The old theory that you need to eat less fat is just totally wrong. Um, lifestyle do, does need to change. You know, people need to move more. Um, we don't live in a perfect world anymore. We probably never did, but um, it's way worse now metabolically speaking. Um, the main problem I've seen with both these drugs is that they're expensive. And the insurance doesn't want to cover them. Um, plus, with all the Hollywood hype around Ozempic, you know, it's tough to get. You know, they totally miscalculated how big this would be and how much was needed. So there is a supply problem as well. That shouldn't be a problem in the future. Believe me, pharmaceutical big pharma wants to make money. They figure out a way, um, but it can be tough to get. Originally for diabetes, these drugs are way better for weight loss. Um, but remember, it's not for a five to ten pound weight loss. Although it would work for that. Um, the good news is there are compounded versions of these. Remember, when you do a compound of medicine, it has to be somewhat different than the brand name. So they make them different. They add something or use different doses. So it's perfectly legal, and it should be, because they make it a lot more affordable for people that can't get the branded. I mean, the branded are going to cost $1,000, $1,200 a month. Who can afford that? Not many people that I know. Um, so these compounded 
medicines are way cheaper than that. Um, insurance just won't pay for a lot of it right now. Um, some weight loss clinics are, in my opinion, gouging people by charging you to go in and get one subcutaneous shot a week um, and charging you more than if you gave yourself the shots. Um, it's an easy thing. I, I don't think I've had hardly anybody that couldn't give themselves this little tiny subcutaneous shot. The needle's tiny. You hardly even feel it. Um, my philosophy at Performance Medicine is to try to get your insurance to approve the brand name, one or the other. But if there's no way that they'll do that, and a lot of times we go to measures, and that's what Weight Watchers is going to do. They're just going to buy a telemedicine company who's going to try to do this for you for a fee, I think a monthly fee. That's all they're going to do. Um, but sometimes the way I like to do it is try to get the branded. If they won't, then I will order it as a prescription in your name for as a compounded medication to teach you how to use it for you to take home so it'll be cheaper for you um, and you know, just way more affordable. Um, so this is a game changer. You know, th these, these class of medicines are a game changer. And Monjero seems to have some advantages over Ozempic and Wegovi, which I love. I mean, he's a ton of this stuff. Um, you know, a lot of times it's which one you can get a hold of, learning how to use it. Um, but remember, it's just part of the solution. Um, lots of other factors like hormones, sleep, exercise, stress reduction, they're all important. So this gives you a really good tool. In a lot of case, cases with morbid obesity, you have to stay on this medication. Um, you know, they did studies when they, they used the medicine for a year or two, then they stopped it. Most of them gained the weight back, just like any other diet, you know, so you need to learn how to eat for sure, which means eating less sugar for certain, um, all the other bad effects of sugar, like the inflammation. And, you know, we talk a lot about fructose. Dr. Fung talks a ton about fructose and how it's way worse than glucose for you. You know, we'll keep you tuned in on all the stuff from that on future podcasts. But it's just really interesting in, in the way we've been misled about what to eat. So these are game changers. So um, talk about it. Think about it. Do your own research. And uh, we'll be glad to help you out with your weight loss journey and keeping the weight off, which is the important thing. It's not losing it. It's maintaining the weight loss. And it's, it leads to just a different lifestyle and better health in every other reason for, from reduction of arthritis, depression, anxiety, heart disease, cancer, fatty liver, kidney disease, neurodegenerative processes, when they call Alzheimer's type 3 diabetes, like we say all the time. So anyway, we've got some great new tools. Come in and see us and let us help you get healthy. Thanks. This is Dr. Rogers. I'll see you next week. Ooh.